So can everybody see that okay? Go Tigers. Yes. Go Tigers. Awesome. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, you know, I am the CISO for Clemson University. Um, this, you know, this is just an overview of the CSOC and this, we call it SOC for short, really. Um, how it got started, how, you know, we kind of got to where we are, how I got to um, be able to be the SOC manager and get involved with students. And uh, I hope you, you know, hope you get something out of it and get encouraged um, by it. Next slide. So um, it's 1996, summer of 1996. I'm 17. I'm just out of high school and I'm working at Blockbuster Video. Um, I really enjoyed my time at Blockbuster Video, but I'm talking to uh, the store manager whose name is Jason. This isn't the actual Blockbuster Video, you know, but it looked a lot like this. And I'm talking to Jason and I'm asking him, to share whatever he could about what he knew about computers. He was, to me, a computer whiz. And I had already decided that IT and computers was the way to go. I wanted to, this is what I wanted to do. Um, and Jason was interesting. He was one of the fastest typers I've ever seen, but all he used was his thumbs and his two first fingers. It was weird, but he was a super fast typer. But Jason had a side job doing computer work. He was, um, you know, he, he knew about the Internet, all these things. And I was begging, kind of pleading with Jason, teach me, you know, I want to learn from you because I, this is what I want to do. And unfortunately, he, he didn't really take me seriously or really um, help me out and, and mentor me and guide me. Uh, you know, it was just he was too busy, basically. Fast forward to the year 2000 after Y2K, we survived Y2K. And this is my first job in IT doing desktop support and computer support at, at the, for the city of Greenville. Um, I was, we were on the third floor of city hall and I'm talking to the system administrator whose name is Rex. And I'm talking to Rex because he is the guy he is a system admin and he's the go-to he's the one that has all the answers and i'm trying to again get knowledge and seek information from him and you know this is pre you can google everything right this is pre you can youtube youtube university right where you can go find a video for everything um, and unfortunately, Rex, he liked to be the keeper of all the. He liked to be the guy that had all the answers. Um, he really didn't want to share that because then he lost some of the glory of being the hero and coming in and saving the day. Um, but he hated Microsoft. Um, so I was a budding Microsoft certified um, MCSE. And he, there was two Windows servers. And he was like, hey, here you go. You know, go mess with these. Uh, I don't want anything to do with them. You go fix them. So I was able to at least get started down that path, but it still kind of ran into a roadblock for looking for that mentor that I, you know I needed and wanted um, to help me out. But an interesting thing happened while I was there. One day at the office down the hall, I heard them talking about a hacker that broke into the city of Greenville's systems. And this is kind of back in that day where, you know, ethical hackers would break in and then they would send over a message or a report saying, hey, we broke into all your stuff. Um, here's how we did it and hire me to help fix your stuff. And I, I had had a semi interest in cybersecurity, but this really was like it was the black magic. It was voodoo. Nobody knew you had to be on the super secret IRC forums to learn this information, right? It wasn't readily available. Uh, but this report, even though it wasn't very sophisticated, it was like an uncloaking of the techniques and how to do a lot of these things, how to, the tools that, they, that you use and, and some of that. And that really kind of put me on the path to eventually, you know, get a job in secure, or at least think that this is something I could do. Like, hey, this is doable. It's not just black magic. So it took me another 
six years or so to land my first job in cybersecurity at Clemson. And I used to work in the basement of PNA. I had an office in the basement and it was a little bit of a dungeon. Um, but I was full time doing security, loving it, having a great time. I, I was I actually did have a job previously as a system administrator, so I was able to do that and then migrate to security. And while I'm there, I'm talking to then at the time, the CISO, Kevin McKenzie, and they're talking about standing up this student sock. And I'm a little confused because I'm like, how how is this going to work? What are we going to do? What does it mean to have a student sock, a student run sock? I mean, it sounded super interesting. I was just thinking we're barely we kind of have a shoestring budget as it is. How are we going to afford to build a space? And then what does that mean? And who's going to run it? And how is it going to be manned? Who's going to manage students? But I had had a few interns at this point. And been able to see how cool it was to work with students um, and to be able to work with them and mentor them and guide them. And I kind of came to a realization of, well, I don't know what they're going to do, but let me put my name in the hat to say that I'm going to be the sock manager, that this is what I want to do officially, put, put my name before they hire somebody else. Because I realized that I had really not had a had a mentor and really I'd never really identified with a mentor. And this is my chance to be that for somebody else, potentially at least teach them lessons learned things that I had made mistakes with. And so that's what, that's what we did. We came up, the SOC was built. We came up with a mission statement um, to protect the university while educating and preparing students for careers. And we didn't really have a, a big game plan. You know, it was okay, we build it, let's build it, and I hope that it works out, right? We hope that they come. We hope the students come. And so we got the word out to students <clears throat> through uh the uh, CU Cyber Club, which is a student club for for focus on security. We told, you know, every, every way we could, we tried to get the word out. Uh, I think even through Reddit. And so we had eight students show up from different majors. And they had no hands on experience. They had nothing right. They had they were most of them were computer science. But what was cool is we kind of I think initially uh, right out the gate, we were thinking, you know, especially I wanted to say to make these interns real analysts, not just. Take it, do it and ticketing and doing the grunt work. Um, you know, even though it was grunt work as, as an analyst, but to throw them into the fire and really to work with us side by side and, and to be there with them side by side to help them help us. And we didn't have a lot of tools we had, but we had enough. We had enough to respond to incidents, to investigate things and to dive in. And we had you know more data and logs than we could as me as really the primary person doing investigations. Um, that I could handle for sure. So we did have some challenges and, you know, it's something you kind of do have with students working with students is their schedules, right? They come in and you have to set up schedules every semester. You got to kind of stagger that out. You know, they'll come in for an hour, maybe work a couple hours and then go back to class and then go back to, you know, come back to work. And that presents challenges because you're trying to keep up with them and who's doing what, who left off at where and what point, things like that. And then you're always recruiting new students. You know, there's a there's a pipeline of students that are graduating and then new students come in and you have to train them up and, and get them up to speed. So it's a little bit like football, I, I would say. I say sometimes because it feels like you're kind of always recruiting and trying to pull in new students. Unfortunately, you're, you know, a lot of your your talent leaves because they're getting you know jobs so but it's just you know part of the deal but we were able to see you know right away just how much of an impact this had on clemson on incident investigations and and really i kind of call i've always called it a force multiplier 
So, you know, you would have this big investigation and you're trying to, you could split it up, right? Okay, you you go here, you look here, you go here. And then eventually, I mean, th these students are super talented, super smart. They were able to pick up quickly and add to not just, you know, be there to do what I'd ask them to do, but then add to with tools and, and you know, scripting and other things and really work as real analysts and add to our program. And they were able to, you know, kind of then start connecting the dots between stuff they were learning in the classroom and stuff they were getting in, you know, in the sock. And even those that worked just for a semester were finding, you know, better career opportunities and able to maybe even get interviews that they wouldn't have gotten before because they could put that on their resume. And then a big part of it is as they're working with us, we're able to kind of work, you know, evaluate them and work with them and see who may be a good fit for us as full time or as full time staff. And we've since hired several that have been interns previously and have worked and, and come on as full time. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, it's huge success from that. Eventually, we upgraded. We moved from um, Bar Hall over to the Watt Center on the fourth floor. And <clears throat> it has more room and more space and we have more desks available to bring in more students is a big part of it. We have windows, which we didn't have windows before. Um, sometimes I kind of miss the dark area, you know, just being in the dark, working through things. But it is nice to see if it's you know raining outside. But but yeah, so we've upgraded to this space. We have full time folks. We have full time SOC managers or a manager and we have uh, full time analysts. And that is really add been able to mature the SOC, you know, it kind of started out with just me figuring things out along the way. Um, and then since then, with the full time SOC managers that have come through, um, it's really leveled up the SOC and been able to add to the policies and procedures and just work as a real. I mean, it's a real SOC. You know, it, it's just really matured along the way. So benefits, you know, this is something that I preach to other universities and we have helped other universities and kind of guided them, gave them our lessons learned about what we've gotten out of this experience and how I'm an evangelist for this, really. I mean, I'm telling all universities you should do this. And they, some of them have hesitancy, hesitancies because they're worried about giving students data. Um, they're worried about giving them access. But, you know, we have we have things we do but really we've not had ever had an issue um students have if they're looking for a career in cybersecurity, if they do something to break that trust right they're really jeopardizing their career out the gate um so and we're there we're always there with them we're working with them we're mentoring them they have oversight but we it's not a concern it's been great but we've been able to attract new students and um, and help them. You know, they've come. I've had high school students come and look at the sock and decide, hey, I think this is I want to come to Clemson because of this potential opportunity, which is really cool. And really, ultimately. The difference between before and after and how the sock has made a difference for protecting Clemson, it's it's night and day. Um, you just imagine being able to add all those you know analysts that can help you think of things differently have a different perspective um, but also tackle the problems tackle you know the the events and 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 dive in and help you out and dig into those so this is just a few slides about students that have come through that have full-time jobs in cybersecurity. this isn't all our students we've had over 44 students that have come through and worked in the SOC. Um, Steve Higuereta, you might recognize him. He's on the call today, but he was my very first intern. And I went to a, a, a class, a computer science class, and just kind of spoke about what we did in security and how we protect Clemson. And this is, I was, I was given the permission to finally get an intern. And 
And Stephen offered that up as a, hey, I'm looking for an intern. Stephen came up, we met, and he came on with me as, as that intern, and we had a great time. We hit it off. And, uh, and he then graduated. And then when I was looking for a sock manager, I hit him up and said, hey, I, I need a sock manager. I can't do everything. And so he came back as a sock manager and worked and did an amazing job, you know, leveling up the sock. Then left again and um, did some things. And then when I became CISO, I was like, hey, I need a, I need a, I need a, a director. I need somebody that did my job for security and operations and infrastructure and, and even need a deputy CISO. And that's what Stephen is for, for me today for Clemson. And Daniel, um, he was our intern in the SOC. And he graduated, worked, um, you know, worked somewhere, and then now he's our. He brought him back, and he's our endpoint security engineer. And a lot of these folks are out there killing it. They're doing amazing. Um, they're all over the nation, and it's one of the coolest things to be able to keep up with these students, see where they are now, and what they're doing, and and how they're doing a great job, and and helping make a difference in the community and in, in security for wherever they are, whatever organization they're part of. And we are hiring. Um, so we are looking for a, a SOC analyst. We have a position open right now. It's it's a temp to perm position. But we, you know, we this the cool part about this and being part of the stock is it's not just like the manager's job to be part of this experience. Um, it's actually everybody is part of this, especially working in the SOC. That's part of your job is to work and mentor and guide students and be with them to to help them out and, and answer their questions. Um, and it's a unique opportunity and it's really definitely one of the best career decisions I ever made was to say yes to be the SOC manager and to have that chance. And Steve and I have started up a side gig, a business, just, just to do this outside of the SOC, to help others, kind of you know, mentorship and coaching for there's a lot of there's a lot of boot camps out there that are looking to people are jumping on board to get it change careers and get into cybersecurity. And we're just doing, you know, our part to to help others. So if you're interested, you can check it out. And that's it. Any questions? I'm happy to answer questions about how we headaches we've had or things we would recommend or not recommend. I'm looking you know, through any, the uh, chat. Any interesting uh, war stories you can share with us? Oh man, um, I have had a student that um, it wasn't somebody that worked in the SOC, but I we had a it was actually a student that showed up on Brian Krebs' blog. <coughs> One of our students, our intern, said, "Hey, I I think Clemson is on Brian Krebs' blog," <laughs> and I was like, "What?" Uh -oh. And so I went out to Krebs, you know, Krebs on security and looked and sure enough, it was a computer science student that had interacted with Brian and maybe was involved with a massive DDoS attack with a he had one of the first one, at least that he had. And and I was like, wait a minute, what, what's happening? Is this person, you know, is this student doing this while they were here at Clemson? Right. So that was our biggest concern. And um, I actually reached out to Brian and just said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm you know, security at Clemson. Would um, do you have any information that you can share about what you, you suspect here? And he, you know, he, he called me and we chatted and it was a good conversation. But ultimately, you know, we've started digging into this student's traffic and activity to see if they had been doing, you know, this kind of attack, a DDoS attack from Clemson because that was a major concern. But one thing that was interesting was that this student, we started kind of searching through tickets and they had shown up before. And, and I thought they, his, their name, his name looked familiar. And he had submitted a ticket to our help desk saying that 
he had found a website that had SQL injection. And, you know, it wasn't anything major. It was like they found where you could list the, the tables. There wasn't anything sensitive in it. Um, but, you know, he didn't he didn't have permission to do that. And I didn't I didn't go after him and throw the book at him or anything like that. I just said, hey, OK, hey, you know, you sh- shouldn't be doing that. Um, but just kind of blew it off because you would think at universities you kind of have this happen a lot. But really, it doesn't happen that often because they can get in trouble. Um, so. I Then this happened with Krebs and I actually kind of let our. CUPD, you know, police department know like, hey, this kid may be involved with something illegal, just letting you know. And they kind of took it and, and ran with it. And then when I told them that he had also been doing some things, you know, SQL injection attack type attacks, they actually arrested him. They show up, kick in his door and um, and arrest him. And I'm like, oh, shoot. OK. And I was like, listen, we don't know anything yet. We don't know that he actually did anything here. but I mean, it's it's on you guys. You can make that decision. That that decision. Well, it turns out he, you know, Homeland Security gets involved. They show up at Clemson, and they interview the kid. And um, basically, he had already been kind of working with the FBI because it wasn't really. It seems like this is you know allegedly um, that he was work. He knew the people that were doing the bad things more than he was involved, although he was involved with some stuff that was kind of shady, but he was kind of providing information to not get in trouble. Right. And, um, and really kind of, they ended up, I think he worked community service for Clemson, just doing things and and really just kind of moved on from there. And he ended up graduating. Uh, But it was interesting just because, you know, since then, uh, you know, he's gone on and I think he still has his own business, but just having that experience, that's not a normal, that's not a normal everyday day. Right. And that's how the university university. And I tell people, it's like a small city. Um, you have you know, water treatment plant, you have a fire department, a police department. Um, you've got all kinds of things that are happening. You got people living on your network and you're, all this stuff while while university ultimately university wants to be open, right? They're not like a corporation. They're like, oh yeah, close all the borders. Um, they want to be open and share information, while at the same time you have student data and health data, research data that you're trying to protect. Um, and people are showing up. Students are showing up with devices that are from all over the world that you have to worry about. So it's definitely an interesting. It's always interesting at, at working at a university. It's it's a challenge, but it's it's fun. That that was one war, war story that I could think of. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Like I said, definitely yeah. not um, not something you get to a, a normal uh, nine to five. <laughs> yep, that's fun. Anybody have any other questions for John? Hey, John, do you have any measurable feedback from the first students on how this hands on experience has helped them land a job or or in their career? Yeah, measurable. I don't know if I've measured it, but it's really like keeping tabs on them. I, ultimately, they I try to ask feedback from them and say, hey, when you've interviewed or when you're talking and when you've landed this job, we've, we've got a student now who. Um, I, I think she's going to be working with the NSA this summer or at least coming up. And she said they are super interested in what the time they spent with the hands on experience. And without that has definitely made a huge con- contribution for her to even get um, an opportunity to to speak with them and then potentially intern with them. So it's really more um, anecdotal, just asking and and then feedback after the fact, like after they graduate, when they're in there and they're working in the job, like I will always ask them because I'm, you know, I'm really interested. Did Do you think this made a difference? You know, do you think that your time working in the SOC helped you? And uh, and I haven't had anybody say no. They've all said yes, that it really kind of opened their eyes to the experience. And, and I kind of tell them, I was like, listen, you don't really understand how much of a golden opportunity this is. You know, this is. 
this is not something I ever had and I wish I'd had it. Um, but, but yeah, to answer your question, question, Luke. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? Hey, John, it's Bill. Um, Wanted to know, do you use open source tooling? And if you do, Raph from Down the Security Rabbit Hole has noted that he sees more engagement and retentions among analysts. So basically, you're not constrained by a particular SOC tool. If you're using open source, it's, hey, I found this new thing I want to detect on. I write the detection. I shove it into the framework. And now we start having new data points. Yeah, I mean, we we kind of we started out on a shoestring budget, so it was everything was open source initially um like like bro at the time was a big part and it's still a big part with zeke and security onion um we have i think mostly i would say most of our tools now are probably commercial tools mainly because of the infrastructure management of the tools Right, okay. they're free. They're free, but you have to have somebody that can manage it and set it mm -hmm. up and and maintain it. I, I'm I'm all for it. I want I want whatever simple, but we can use and it gets the job done. Um, I don't know that I've seen student feedback on. We would rather have this tool that you know is more open that we can do things with. Um, but I'm definitely not opposed to it, and have been a big believer in it since we've had this off. But thanks. That's a good question. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And that's one thing at a, you know, we don't have a huge budget, but at a university, we do have a lot of, I would say, enterprise like tools. Um, you know, we're using things. That's the cool part is that we're using tools that when they go out like Splunk and Elastic, they're they're able to show, hey, I've been using this tool. And People are like, oh, you're, you're already using Splunk as an analyst. You're already using Elastic as an analyst. Like, tell me about that. So see a question about chat GPT. That's a good question. We we, we like to, um, every time we use chat B GPT, we like to tell it thank you. Or we appreciate you because we want the overlords to be to be kind to us. <laughs> um, no, I, I think uh, I think it's cool. I mean, we're definitely keeping tabs on it. and. You know, things like Microsoft, I can't remember the tool that they're talking about now of being able to add that um, AI capability. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know what's going to happen, um, but we have used ChatGPT and probably some of you others have used it to write phishing messages that we, you know, sell fish our people. And they're actually pretty good. So we've tested it out at least just to kind of mess with it. But um, yeah. No, it's okay. I think it's it's interesting too. Yeah, no, it's very yeah, it's a good point. We're actually demoing the uh, Microsoft version right now in our SOC, and uh, it definitely has a lot of potential. It's definitely also not <laughs> where it needs to be. You could tell it's just it's just getting started. Uh, so it's very yeah. good with you know very s specific kind of queries around defender data. But uh, don't try and go too far out of that one specific niche. Uh, but one day, I think there's yeah. definitely a lot of potential there. And it I've, I've heard, I say I've heard it described as kind of like an intern. Like think about it as like the intern. Hey, intern, go do this for me. And I, I don't, not the Microsoft one, but just in general. Um, and I, I can kind of see that now. But if you want to kind of be paranoid about it, if you listen to the Lex Friedman podcast about chat gpt open ai they can kind of take you down a, a rabbit hole of hmm maybe we should stop this thing like elon says i i do like the point about not brutalizing the ai because you're creating the psychopathic version of tomorrow every time you do that so yes please thank yous yeah <laughs> be very 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 nice <laughs> <laughs> That's that's funny. Um, anybody else have any other questions? 
I was curious. So I thought I was really interested in, because I think you had the first part of your presentation, just talking about how you know you got into cybersecurity, which I thought was really interesting because I didn't, I hadn't heard that story before. Um, so maybe others you know, also be interested in learning more about you know, how did you go from SOC manager to now being the the CISO at Clemson. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So I still actually have that report, a physical paper copy. I don't know how I've kept it um, that for the guy who did the hacking for City of Greenville. Um, <laughs> it's interesting that like dogpile, right? Like, no, you know, is anybody ever heard of dogpile anymore? Um, some of the, some of the tools that, that he used. But so for me, you know, I took that step to go be a SOC manager, not never intending like my goal wasn't to be a CISO my goal was just to really be the best I could be at, at solving and solving problems and stopping bad guys um, but as I brought in a full-time SOC manager and then I was able to you know bring Steven in and then I was able to do more things to kind of make us better kind of focus more on those things as a director um, and then things just kind of matured and I was able to move as a deputy director. I really wasn't officially a deputy CISO. I was like the deputy director, which basically is a deputy CISO. Even then, I still really wasn't planning on being a CISO. Like I was like, I, I don't want it to be a CISO. There's too much politics, too many things you have to worry about, too many meetings. And then, you know, 2023, I'm sorry, 2021 hits and you know, the great resignation hits, everybody kind of leaves Clemson uh, from the security team. We lost like five people. And it w it wasn't just that everybody left that I got the job, but that's part of it. Like everybody left, like, like the CISO, he retired. And uh, and I was had been really putting a lot of thought into it and thinking about, do I want to be CISO? And, and I would go back and forth. But the opportunity happened. He's like, hey, I am retiring. You need to kind of decide, is this what you want to do? And I did. I said, you know what? I'm going to give it a run. I'm going to give it a try. And I think this is where I can make the most impact to make, to leave Clemson eventually one day better than, uh, you know, than when I got here. And, uh, and it really has been awesome. Um, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's cool to be able to, there's not as many roadblocks to have to make to move the needle, right? Um, you know, my boss is a CIO and we have a great relationship. And so we're able to be on the same page and make things happen. And he's as paranoid as I am um, about security, which is awesome. I don't have to convince him about all the things that are that we should be worried about. Um, so it, it's really been interesting. I've been CISO a little over a year and a half now. And I'll, it's cool. It's really neat to be able to have that opportunity and to keep moving things forward for Clemson. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I got there. Okay, awesome. Yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing. Um, Thanks, Brian, right. for the link to Lex Friedman. No problem. That's a good one. I'm, I'm I'm surprised surprised that Bill didn't come up with that one either, or you just beat him to it. <laughs> he he beat me to it. I stumbled across that uh, probably a week ago or so, and it's, it was uh, just it was amazing. Absolutely, it's amazing. really it's really interesting and a little bit scary. So yeah, so I can't. It's probably a Gibsonism, um, but there were there was a likening of AI right now to the internet in like 93 94 right before the summer that never ended mm -hmm. and, and it's just that that radical shift and change that we're kind of at that moment at that precipice to go hey the next 30 years is going to be dominated by this like it's it's seeing the first model t roll off the assembly line and having henry come up and go everybody's going to have one of these in their driveway pretty soon and mm -hmm. you're going, no, Henry, I like my horse. I get four <laughs> shoes on him, give him some hay and oats, and he's good to go. And then fast forward, what are we, about a century and 10 years on? And it's like, sure enough, everyone has one of these horseless carriage and probably two parked in their driveway right now. So 
I, for one, am looking forward to my Jarvis. <laughs> but, but is your Jarvis looking forward to you? That's that's <laughs> that, that's the that's the scary part, right? Um, <laughs> I, I have I have a fear that my Jarvis will find me redundant and and fix that that redundancy. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's the big question. <laughs> uh, well, uh, John, thanks again for uh, coming out and, and sharing with everybody. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm sure everybody found it really interesting. So it's great. I has great work. It's really exciting. I think I'm sure uh, you get really excited to see, you know, where your students are. I mean, you saw some great companies out there and they're doing some pretty incredible things just uh, and you gave them a huge launching pad in, in their career. So it's really, really amazing and uh, something to admire, too. So thanks for all you do out there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, and then just real quick to let everybody know. So next month we're going to have uh, Mr. Kevin Johnson with Secure Ideas come back. You know, he kind of comes every year and talks about web app security. Uh, so he'll be back next month. And then the month after that, we'll have Mark Schreiber talking about uh, physical security. A lot's been changing, especially in the the drone space and and how things have kind of worked out since since uh, COVID. Um, yeah, that was a big focus, I'm sure, for him for for a couple of years there. Uh, and now there's you know getting kind of back to the the more traditional space and 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 conversations and and how AI potentially factors in and and but again with a big focus on on drones companies you know looking at how they protect themselves from from drone technology and uh, some related topics so that'll be a great talk um, and then that will actually bring us to then to our August meeting which is where we'll start meeting back in person. So for those of you that remember the uh, the new Greenville Tech facility behind uh, Clemson ICAR that we were meeting at, we'll be back there, and that'll be the August meeting. So uh, I'm still working on uh, a particular um, team to to come present then. So I'll uh, <laughs> it's not 100% yet. So I'm gonna hold on to that one for a little bit. <laughs> so so excited though that uh, we'll have Kevin uh, Johnson back next week. Uh, and then Mark Schreiber uh, the month after that. I think everybody loves both of their presentations every time they come around. So it's great to have them. Uh, and then we'll be back in person uh, in, in August. So and then that gets us ready for, again, B-Sides on October 28th. So we will get uh, tickets on sale like I said, next week. Um, we'll get that link out to everybody on the ISA mailing list first uh, and then and that will open it up for the the broader audience at the the full price. Um, trying to think of anything else, but I think we covered everything else there. Um, uh, and uh, unless anybody has anything else, we'll uh, we'll call it at that. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks again, John. And thank you. Uh, talk to everybody soon. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. See ya. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye, you. Everyone.